So why were these losers together, hey? Not only were these losers together, but these losers were together the same day of a pro-Palestine conference. In the same city as the pro-Palestine conference. You know, there these there's this guy who's a fed and a wrecker himself, but accuses everybody else of being a fed and a wrecker. There's this loser who has a shitty hairline and should have invested in Rogaine foam. And this guy who should have invested in Rogaine foam a long time ago, who was a Zionist normalizer. By the way, he's a Zionist clown as well. He's a neo-Confederate. Um, you got this psyop right here, handpicked by Tulsi Gabbard to be her understudy. Likes to promote birch gold with Ron Paul. This little casserole boy who looks like he loves blasting double legs and single legs in the octagon and would be susceptible to an opponent uh, similar to Alistair Overeem. By the way, he's a Zionist and a neo-Confederate. You got this clown right here whose ancestors owned slaves in Cuba most likely and is a washed up academic whose family migrated to Cuba from Castilla y León. And then you got the fake Russian who loves settler colonialism, has, has tattoos on his hands, and looks like he was probably some sort of Nazi back in the day. So, again, you got Haas, the Fed. Kyle Pettis, who's a Fed and a neo-Confederate. Danny Shaw, who's a liberal Zionist and a Fed. Jackson Hinkle. Definitely a Fed and a liberal Zionist. Eddie Luger Smith, uh, a smudge grappler and a casserole communist uh, with cauliflower ears. You know, susceptible to more cow specialists in the octagon. Um, you know, if you if you know how to use that style in the octagon, um, thinks he's the next Daniel Cormier. Wouldn't surprise me if he started bloat maxing. He's also a Zionist and a neo-Confederate. Um, you remember, he's the same guy that praised Natan Levy uh, and promoted Oliver Anthony. This neo-Confederate, Kyle Pettis, promoted Oliver Anthony. Danny Shaw is a liberal Zionist because he promoted um, Amos Poe. Uh, this guy here, Hinkle the Stinkle, he's a, he's a clown and a, a deep state puppet. Um, and a grifter. He was handpicked by Tulsi Gabbard and Ron Paul. By the way, Tulsi Gabbard's a terrorist and a war criminal. Um, oh, and he went surfing with Tulsi Gabbard too because he thinks he's California cool, man, but he's really not. Um, he's a whiny little trust fund. Uh, you have this washed up academic family. His family, like I said, his family probably owned slaves in Cuba. Um, that's why he was born in Miami. Um, furthermore, he uh, normalized Zionist terrorist Nurit Pelad Elahan. Uh, and then you got the fake Russian, Noah Rachvik. You Google the guy's name on Forebears IO, doesn't even come up. So he's got a fake last name. He's a fake Russian. He's probably Irish. So, yeah. Um, what else? So, yeah. So this is what my buddy, Flame of Liberation, by the way, like and subscribe to Flame of Liberation's channel. And nobody's paying me to say this because I don't earn money off of YouTube. Um, Flame of Liberation says, seems like they put on that conference to try to wreck and split the actual Palestine conference going on the same day and city. Organized by actual Palestinians and anti-imperialist groups. The suspiciousness of all those involved in that Free America conference just went up. So, here's some photos from the conference. Comrade Walden looks like some stupid Zoomer. Says, great event, boys. And he tags Haas. This, this stupid clown calls himself a warlord? Yeah, right. The guy probably 
wouldn't even last a second in a real war, let alone in a Muay Thai sparring match. And that's tech sparring, son. You got this guy, Hinkle the Stinkle, who is a literal puppet of China. He's a puppet of Zionist China. He is an asset of, of Zionist terrorist, Tulsi Gabbard. And then you got this cult, this Zionist settler colonial cult, run by this fake Russian. Husband, father, father, carpenter. Yeah, you probably gentrify every neighborhood you see in sight. And by the way, he's a Zionist because he runs cover for Zionists like MLK and W.E.B. Du Bois. So here's what Flame of Liberation said. MAGA communism is Zionist fake, quote unquote, communism. You are clowns. You are absolutely clowns and you support U.S. imperialism. I agree with Flame of Liberation 100%. And in fact, there are more photos from that circus with those clowns. This is what I was talking about earlier. Noah Khrachvik got tattoos on his hands and knuckles. Probably in some sort of Nazi gang back in the day. Wouldn't be surprised... I would not be surprised if he was in some sort of Nazi gang back in the day with those tattoos on his knuckles. You got Kyle Pettis with a shitty hairline. Right? Get yourself some Rogaine foam. That shit's cheap at Safeway, son. You have a couple weirdo hipsters with their weird-ass tattoos. You got Carlos Garrido. Looking like with his little earrings in. Looking like he wants to go nightclubbing in Miami. And then you got Castro Boy. <clears throat> looking like he does. Looking like all he does is spam double legs and single legs. And is susceptible um, to Muay Cow specialists in the octagon. And if you don't believe me. Google Alistair Overeem. Overeem made a living. Off of obliterating wrestlers who would continuously spam double legs and single legs. And Overeem was kind of sort of a muy cow and muy plum hybrid, right? But uh, Eddie Liget Smith looks like he loves spamming double legs and single legs in the octagon. He looks like... It, it looks like a Muay Cow specialist who is a Muay Cow, Muay Plum hybrid specialist could be his kryptonite. Just saying. Anyone that's... Because, let's see, he weighs 74 kilos, so he'd probably go up to welterweight. So any welterweights, you know what I mean. Just saying. Any any welterweights, use your Muay Cow techniques. You know what I mean? In case you're, this guy's your opponent in the octagon. You know what I mean? So, casserole boy here. Cauliflower ear casserole boy. Look, he's on stage. He's begging for his bag of bagels. Oh, don't you know? I beg for the bag of bagels. <laughs> That's probably how he talks. Don't you know? You betcha. Beg for the bag of bagels. <laughs> That's literally how people in Minnesota talk. And we would shit on people. When I went to summer camp there, we would hella shit on people. Oh, you beg for a bag of bagels. <laughs> it's funny. Right? So now you got the fake Russian with his pink shirt looking like he's going to nightclub. Right? I already closed out that picture of his the tattoos on his hands. Um 
Yeah, you know, the fake Russian looked like he's going to the nightclub. Because when you Google the guy's last name on four on forebears.io, it don't even show up. So he's a fake Russian. Fake Russian. Um, the fake Russian trying to do his best impersonation of Khabib because that's all. That's the only Russian he knows. Davai, davai, davai. Right? It's literally all he knows, and that's most of the Russian I know, and that's just from watching UFC. Um, <laughs> this guy is a fake Russian. He's actually Irish, but he claims to be Russian. And that's so weird. They have American flags next to Palestinian flags. Like, what are you trying to do? The U.S. is literally enabling genocide in Palestine by funding the Zionist entity. And it's so weird because their favorite, this guy's favorite two countries, America and China, are the two largest trading partners of the Zionist entity. And that's hella suspicious, man. Same with this guy. This guy's favorite two countries, America and China, are the two leading trading partners of the Zionist entity. Also, this guy ran cover for Natan Levy and for liberal Zionist Dan Cohen. Then you got this guy looking like he's going to Miami nightclub with his weirdo little earrings on. And this guy's a Zionist puppet. Um, you know, he normalized Nur Peled Elahan, you know, but the, just the fact that there's an American flag next to a Palestinian flag disgusts me. It looks like they're trying to co-opt the Palestinian liberation movement. And then you have the little gremlin, the Avha is going yabba dabba do. And you got cauliflower casserole boy. Look, his smile is so fake. And he's got a weird little mustache. He like it's like he wants to gentrify everything in his sight. And you got the fake Russian. You got the gusano. The gusano who looks like he's going to a nightclub in Miami. Or to a nightclub in Paris. And you got Kyle Pettis, who has a shitty hairline and should probably invest in some Rogaine foam. Like, look how shitty his hair... Like, my hairline's not the best, but you should see this guy's hairline, man. Like, this guy needs Rogaine foam. Yeah, this guy, Eddie Liget Smith, he looks like he likes to blast singles and doubles. Like, he looks like a good opponent for a Muay Cow specialist, if you know what I mean. Google Alistair Overeem. If you don't believe me, if you don't, if you want to see an actual Muay Cow specialist in action, just obliterating an opponent that just blasts double legs and single legs all the time, just Google the Reem. Google Alistair Overeem, man. And again, this is no endorsement of Alistair Overeem. I don't endorse him as a person, but as a, as a martial artist, yeah, the Reem is one of my favorites, just because of his Muay Cao techniques. Um, yeah, and just because of his style, you know what I mean. But this guy would be a good uh, a good opponent for someone similar to Alistair Overeem. Just saying. Um. And then you have Carlos, El Gusano Cubano, El Gusano Castellano, with his little earrings, looking like he wants to go nightclubbing. You got the fake Russian, with some kind of Illuminati uh, triangle tattooed on his right bicep. And then you got Casserole Boy, looking like he blasts double legs and single legs and it would be an ideal opponent for a Muay Cow specialist. So, these guys are clowns, man.
These guys are clowns and you can't trust them. They're liberal Zionists. So there you go. These guys are liberal Zionists. Never trust a liberal Zionist. So there you go.